last service. This is Mount Olive Baptist Church, 395 Mount Olive Road, Stafford, Virginia. We're so glad you decided to tune in today. Happy Palm Sunday. Prepare your hearts and minds as we go before the Lord. Palm Sunday, it's first Sunday. Prepare your hearts and minds before we go before the Lord in meditation. Mount Olive Way, we will always lift a hymn of the morning, and this morning we are lifting the hymn, Lift Him Up. It would be page 420 in your hymnal. Even if you're in your home, feel free to stand with us as we lift this hymn. It starts with how to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. It's Palm Sunday, and we're going to lift up Hosanna this morning. How to reach? How do you reach the masses? Men of every bird, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I invite you lifting up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Oh, lift him up.
somebody. Help me, Jesus. Come on and help me. Help me, Jesus. Lift me up.
you're at home, I know we got a program, but you can keep clapping your hands and you can keep singing unto God and worship at home. For he's worthy to be praised. say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I even hear you at home. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Wherever you are, can you just put your hands together? We are here. Amen. In a spirit of victory on this morning, this is still yet the day, Palm Sunday, that the Lord has made, and I still rejoice, and I'm still glad. We have no choice but to be glad in this atmosphere of crisis. And God is right on time. He does not work by happenstance, but he works by providence. And I believe in my heart that he has providentially placed us here on this Sunday in the midst of crisis to remind us that victory is within our reach. Pastor Eric Shaw, privileged pastor of Mount Olive Baptist Church of Stafford, Virginia. Uh, praise God for another day of life, amen. Uh, thank God for Jesus, who is our redeemer, our sustainer, and our savior as we approach another season of Palm Sunday and on next week, Resurrection Sunday. Allow me to extend thanks to all of you that have dialed in from home, that have logged in online. We welcome you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Also allow me to thank uh, those that are assembled here in the church this morning. Want to let you all know that we are in compliance. Amen. We do have the, the required less than 10 um, that is required by many states. And we are all spaced at least six feet apart. But I want to pause and thank uh, those that have assembled here, whether it be in the media room, to the marvelous choir that has blessed your souls thus far, and to two of the brothers, three of the brothers that represent our media team. Bless his name. Amen. This is Palm Sunday. Amen. We praise God for his word. Uh, just as a reminder to you, just some housekeeping that we can get uh, to the side so that we can get to the word. Today, uh, between uh, 1230 and 2 o'clock, for those members that want to, this is not compulsory. Um, but it's an option. Between 12.30 and two o'clock this afternoon, we'll be handing out palms in front of the church. We'll have less than 10 people assembled outside the church where you can come, stay in your car, and receive your palm and your Lord's Supper kit for next week. Uh, we, we have a deacon and a deaconess here that have been so kind to assemble your Lord's Supper kit and your palm in, uh, um, in a baggie. 
All you need to do is roll down your window and we'll safely hand it to you through your car. You need not exit your car. And that's today between 12.30 and 2 o'clock. So this broadcast will end uh, about 11 a.m. to give you enough time to make your way here to get your Lord's Supper kit and your palm. On next week, which is Resurrection Sunday, hallelujah, we will be celebrating uh, the Lord's Supper during the live broadcast. Uh, so for those of you that have uh, received your Lord's Supper kit this week, uh, hang on to it so that you can celebrate the Lord's Supper with us online next week. Now, if by some chance you were unable to get your Lord's Supper kit, whether it be this week or next week, because we're handing out the Lord's Supper kits next week as well, um, you can use uh, bread or crackers at home or grape juice at home. Amen, because the word of God declares as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup. And I'll be pronouncing a blessing over the elements prior to us uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper during next week's broadcast. Amen. And finally, beloved, to all the members of the church, those that may be listening online, uh, in order that we exercise proper stewardship uh, to still be able to pay the bills, mortgage, and, and still do missions work. Amen. Uh, you can give online, mobcstaffer.com. There is a donate button, a yellow donate button on the left-hand side on the blue panel on the website, and it will walk you through the steps uh, to give online. You can also mail in your offering, tithes and offerings, to P.O. Box 2916, Stafford, Virginia, 22555-2916. Again, we greet you in, in, in Jesus' joy this morning, praying for all of our sister churches. And as we go to the word of God, I ask that wherever you are, just bow your head in a word of prayer with me. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we uh, stand grateful this morning for another day of life. Uh, Father God, you know uh, the crisis uh, that grips our world, that grips our nation. Father God, you know the crisis that has taken hundreds of thousands of lives. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that as your church does what you have commanded us to do, and that is to occupy until you come, we ask, oh God, that you will miraculously uh, remove uh, this pestilence and this plague from our land uh, that you will anoint uh, this world with healing in the name of Jesus I pray oh God that you will uh, send a word this morning that will edify God's people that will glorify the Christ that we serve and that will terrify the enemy that seeks to destroy us at this troubling time such as this. Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen, amen. As we say in the church, if you have your Bibles, would you please, we're going to turn to two portions of scripture this morning. The first of which will be Luke chapter 19 and will commence at verse 28. I ask that you would turn with me to Luke chapter 19 and I will commence reading at verse 28. I'll pause for a moment to allow you to make your way to Luke chapter 19 and I'll commence at verse 28. And when you're found it, say amen. Amen, I heard you at home, amen. 
Amen. Luke 19, commencing at verse 28. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, and it came to pass when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, whereas you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you're loosing it, thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. Verse 38, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I now invite your attention to John chapter 12, and I will commence reading at verse 12. John chapter 12, and I will commence reading at verse 12. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of Israel. This is God's word, and we are God's people, and to God is the glory. The message topic for this occasion is victory is at hand. Victory is at hand. Beloved, in this time of crisis, one of the requirements that we have is that we are required to be distant. We are required to be at least six feet apart. We are required to be confined. We are required to be shut in. But I want to suggest to you today that while we are confined and shut in, that our God has still yet blessed us with vivid imaginations. God has still blessed us to dream dreams. And our imagination has no confinement. Our imagination is limitless. So I, I need everyone to tap into your sanctified imagination this morning, and I need you to take a trip with me back in time, over 2,000 years ago. There's a parade going on over 2,000 years ago. It is the Palm Sunday Parade. And at the time of the text in this parade, the culture of the Bible lets us know that there were between 150,000 and 2 million people that descended on Jerusalem to take part in the Passover feast. The Bible says that Jesus marches into Jerusalem for the last time. It is a moment in history on which the wheel of time now turns. It is the moment of tremendous possibility. Jesus had come up from Jericho Road from the Jordan Valley and finally reached a place called Bethany and Bethpage, two villages that were perched on the slope of the Mount of Olives. Stay in your sanctified imagination for a few more moments 
And let's review some of the exciting and dramatic events of that first Palm Sunday. First of all, we need to know that Jesus planned his own parade. Up to this point in the text, beloved, Jesus had maintained some degree of anonymity. He had been keeping a low profile, cautioning those who had been healed and helped to go and tell no one. But now, beloved, is the time for his recognition. For Jesus knew that the world needed this particular parade. Here he mounted a colt to ride into the holy city. And the text says that it was a colt that had never been ridden before. Listen to the instructions of Jesus. He says, go into the village opposite you where you will enter and find a coat tied on which no one had ever sat. And he says, loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Jesus uses a coat instead of a horse to ride into Jerusalem. Why does he do that? Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a colt and not a horse in order to fulfill the prophetic word that was uttered by, by Zechariah in chapter 9, verse number 9. Hear the words of Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9, and it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout! O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He is lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus could have used other means by which to ride into Jerusalem in that Palm Sunday parade, but he had used a colt that had never been ridden before in order to fulfill prophecy. Beloved, there would be no conquering king riding on a white stallion, but there would be a king of peace riding on a young colt. Jesus would come in peace and reconcile the word in peace. There would be no overthrowing of governments. There would be no military retaliation. Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, not to win wars with weapons, but to win souls with salvation. That coat which Jesus uses can't speak. But although that coat cannot speak, beloved, that that coat still has a testimony. Notice the condition of the coat. The text says that the coat was tied. So whenever it tried to move, whatever it had tied to it, would make sure that the colt wouldn't go too far. The best that that colt could do, beloved, was to move around in circles. The colt was tied and limited to how far it could go. Some colts have a tendency to be undomesticated, but Jesus still says, I want to use it. That's, that's somebody's testimony in the house this morning. That's somebody's testimony on the phone this morning. That, that's somebody's testimony online this morning. Until Jesus took note of you, you were bound, going around in circles, waiting to be used by God. But does anybody listening this morning know that you are going around in circles, but the Lord loosed you in order to use you? Uh, yeah, you thought you were living a good life before, but it, you really started living uh, when the Lord decided to use you. You, you really started living uh, when the Lord began and he set you free. And when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you when the world and your friends and your family and folk thought you were not worth anything. Can anybody raise a hand where you are and thank God that he loosed you and he set you free and he used you? Look at what the Lord has done in your life. Jesus rode in to Jerusalem on a colt, a donkey. 
J Jesus probably looks out of place because kings don't ride on donkeys. But watch this, beloved. Regardless of how Jesus comes in, <laughs> yes, Lord, he's still king. Regardless of how he arrives, Jesus is still king of the earth. He's still king over the sinner. He's still king over the blind and broken. And when you know he's king over your life, in spite of your condition, you ought to make way for him to come in. Lord, I don't care how you show up. Just show up. Because when you arrive, you have something that's going to make my life better than it was before. Have I got a witness in the house? Have I got a witness listening at home this morning? I don't, I don't care how you get there, God, because when, when you arrive in my house, when you arrive at my place, I know you've got something uh, that's going to make my life better than it was before. Notice, beloved, there's, there's three crowds in the text. First crowd in the text was the traditional crowd. Those were folk that just kind of came in as usual. Visitors that came in from the outside to celebrate the Passover. You had the traditional crowd. The second crowd in the text was the trouble crowd. Trouble crowd was uh, the, the religious leaders. They, they, they were the ones that were in charge. They, 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 they were the ones that were concerned about what Jesus might do when he, he, he came to town. The trouble crowd is, is the crowd that is, that is threatened by your authority. Trouble crowd is a crowd that's troubled, even in spite of what's going on. A troubled crowd, all the folks that are, that are jealous about what God is doing in your life, jealous about the blessing that God is bringing into your life. The troubled crowd is a crowd that's troubled by Jesus. But beloved, there was another crowd in the text, and that was the triumphant crowd. And I want to submit to everybody this morning that you don't want to be in the, in the trouble crowd. You don't want to be in the traditional crowd. The fact of the matter is, the very fact that you're online this morning, the very fact that you called in on the phone this morning demonstrates that you're not in the traditional crowd. Because at a time such as this, we, we cannot afford to be traditional in the church. You had the traditional crowd. You had the trouble crowd. But I, I submit that you want to be in the triumphant crowd. Why is that, Dr. Shaw? I'm so glad you asked me because the triumphant crowd knows how to receive Jesus when he comes in. Watch the text. The Bible says that they threw their clothes on the coat. And as he went, they, they, they spread their clothes on the road. And when you lay down your clothes in the Bible culture, it, it indicates that somebody more important than you is arriving in town. So when they lay down the clothes on the ground, it is, don't miss this, it is a sign of worship. Mm. The people got rid of their clothes to make way for Jesus. Have I got a witness in here? In other words, they, they did not let their clothes get in the way of your worship. There's going to be a day, beloved, when we are assembled in our houses of worship when this crisis passes over. And we got to learn how to worship and praise God on another level. Don't let your clothes, don't let your stuff get in the way of your worship. Mm. I know next week if the Lord delays his coming, is Resurrection Sunday. And you know the custom of the church folk. 
They buy brand new clothes. They buy brand new shoes. They go to the hairdresser the day before because they want to look real good on Resurrection Sunday. But maybe this season is a time for us to reflect now that we can't go to the beauty salon. Now that we can't go to the barber shop, now that we can't go to the mall and buy a brand new suit and some brand new gators, maybe it's a time for us to reflect on the fact that you don't have to have a brand new outfit to make way for the king. You don't need to have a brand new haircut or hairdo in order to make way for the king. Because the Bible says in the prophetic book of Isaiah that he has clothed me with praise. He hath clothed me with salvation. He hath clothed me with a robe of righteousness. No new suit, but you're still dressed. No new hat, but you're still dressed. No new suit, but you're still dressed. So in this time of crisis, when Jesus is still yet passing by, you need to lay down some stuff at the feet of Jesus. Lay down your distress at the feet of Jesus. Lay down your doubt at the feet of Jesus. Lay down your, point, your disappointments at the feet of Jesus. In your worship, you don't have to worry because when you worship and lay it at Jesus' feet, you don't have to carry it yourself and lay it down at his feet. The triumphant crowd receives him as king. Yet the triumphant crowd knows how to receive him as savior. Notice how they shouted when Jesus came in. They shouted, Hosanna in the highest. They shouted, son of David. They shouted, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Have I got a witness in here that yeah. you made it up in your mind? Oh, yes. Have I got anybody listening on the phone well, sir. that you made it up in your mind? Yeah. Have I got anybody on Facebook well. that made it up in your mind? Oh, yes. I'm not going to stand yeah. in uh, the traditional crowd. Yeah. I'm not going to stand uh, well. in uh, the trouble crowd. Yeah, yeah. But have I got anybody in here yes. that decided you're going to be uh, in the triumphant crowd? You've been through some hardship, well. but I'm going to stay in the triumphant crowd. Mm -hmm. You've been through the storm. Well, sir. You're in a storm right now. Yes. But I'm going to stay in the triumphant crowd. Yes. Because when you see Jesus yes. riding through the crowd, yes. you still got the victory yes. in the name of Jesus. Because when you think yes. about the goodness of Jesus yes. and all oh. he's done for you, yes. have I got a witness? Yes. You can still cry out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Is there anybody in here that's ready to do what they did in the text and call on the name of Jesus? Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the son of David. Blessed be the name of Jesus from the rising of the sun. His name is still worthy yes. to be praised. Yes. To the going down of the same, yes. he's still worthy, worthy 
to be praised. The Bible says you had some folk in the crowd that said it don't take all of that. You had some folk in the crowd that said the virus is in the land. Ain't no need to praise him. But have I got anybody in here that knows in your spirit in spite of your trials he's worthy to be praised. In spite of your tribulation he's still worthy to be praised. The Bible the Bible says, Jesus said, if you don't praise me, yes. the very rocks will cry out oh, yeah. and praise his name. Yes. Let the church say, yeah. yeah, I see somebody yeah. in the crowd this morning yeah. that's got a right mind to give God a praise. praise I see Bartimaeus yes. that's got a reason oh, to God. give God some praise. Oh, yeah. Because he said, I once was blind, yeah. but now I see. Oh, yeah. I got to give God a praise. Yeah. I see a woman with the issue of blood yeah. who said, I got a right mind yeah. to give God some praise. Yeah. Because I found healing yeah. in the hem of his garment. Yeah. I need about two or three folk yeah. that don't, don't mind saying yeah. that there's sickness in the land. Oh, yeah. But Hosanna! Save us now. The government don't know what it's doing. But Hosanna anyhow. Yeah. Save us now. I can't see past tomorrow. But it's still worthy to be praised. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Somebody ought to say praise God. Yeah. Have I got anybody in here? That can still say thank you. I still got food on my table. Thank you, Lord. You woke me up this morning. Thank you, Lord. Started me on my way. Thank you, Lord. Holding my right mind. Thank you, Lord. You provided for me. Thank you, Lord. Hosanna. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? You're the shot, yeah. Say it again. Yes. Say yes. yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. When Jesus came to town 2,000 years ago. The Bible says, watch the text. John says they took, don't miss this, saints. They took the palm branches from the tree. The palm branch is a symbol of victory. They had to reach for their victory. You're in confinement. I, I need not restate what's going on in this globe and in this nation. But not even virus and pestilence can stop Jesus from coming your way. You have yet victory at hand in Jesus. He came in to bring you peace. Most of all, beloved, he came to bring you salvation. And it would be remiss that as we conclude this service, if I did not offer salvation to somebody listening this morning, we're glad you joined us online. And in God's wise providence, there might be somebody who's been online that's never been in church. There was a troubled crowd. There was a traditional crowd. But as I extend Christ to you, you need to be in the triumphant crowd. The triumphant crowd cried out, Hosanna. That word Hosanna means save us now. I'm going to open up the doors of the church, not, not the physical church. Because again, the church are the people that God has called out of the darkness into the marvelous light.
If somebody is listening today, whether on the phone line or online, on Facebook, Jesus came in on a donkey to let, him, that, to let you know that he came to bring peace. And you can have peace this morning if you put your trust in Jesus. The good news is that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be hosannaed, you shall be saved. Notice the Bible doesn't say where you do it. All you need to do is confess and believe. All you need to do is utter these words. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. Lord, I admit that I've come short of your glory. Then you need to utter the words. Lord, I believe that you died for my sins. Lord, I confess that I've sinned against you. But Lord, I believe on this Palm Sunday, I have the victory when I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. We'll pause for just another moment and just let the Spirit move as he may. If you made that decision this morning, and you're listening on Facebook, the Mount Olive Baptist Church is online, I, I would ask that you would send us a message with your first name and a phone number or an email, but preferably a phone number, where a member of our leadership can call you and pray with you and minister to you in the decision that you have made to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Brothers, we are living in the last days. And this crisis upon the land, I pray, will draw this nation and this world closer to God through Jesus Christ. I pray that you had a word today that, that you could meditate and pray on until we yet meet again on Wednesday night for Bible study. As I conclude, I, I just want to utter a word of prayer. There's still power in God's word. So wherever you are, I just pray that you would unite with me in prayer. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. We adore you, God. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge your worthiness. We acknowledge your holiness. We love you, Lord. God, as we approach your throne again in prayer, we, we still confess and our sins and our transgressions before you. Even during this crisis this week, we may have been out of your will and we don't want anything to hinder our prayers. So God, we pray that you forgive us of our transgressions and, and God, give us the, the, the capacity to forgive those that have transgressed against us. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your word. And God, we thank you for sparing us yet another day. And God, we offer this humble supplication. Your word declares that by the blessing of the upright is the city exalted. By the blessing of the upright the city is exalted. And Father God, as I pray this prayer, I call on the upright. I call on the righteous of every state, every city, every town, every hamlet, every location in these United States to put your voices together in prayer this morning. Father, we need a healing, a supernatural healing in this land in the name of Jesus. Father God, people have been furloughed and let go of their jobs. Our land is in economic recession, heading to depression. But God, you provided us with heavenly blessings, heavenly riches according to your riches and glory. The prayers of the righteous ask, oh God, that you will 
still provide food on the table, that you provide means for every household in the land, that you will still be the Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. Now God, we pray to pause for the families of those whose lives have been claimed by this virus. We pause to pray for the bereaved this morning across this nation that your comforting spirit will permeate their households and bring in the comfort that only comes through your Holy Spirit. Comfort the bereaved. Let the blood of the doorpost be over every household as it was over the children of Israel. And God, as we close this prayer, Give us the encouragement to know that we have victory at hand. This is our, your servant's prayer, and we pray it in faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, let all the church wherever you are say amen, amen, and amen. As we conclude, I pray this for you. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, and may the Lord grant you his peace.